who just fought there and had a loss in the semifinals, but also a bronze medal finish at the Worlds. So we've got Fabricio Andre, and we've got Diego Sodre out of Novo Nial. Now, Diego Sodre has had an incredible tournament. He's looked absolutely electric. And both of these guys are some of the most fun competitors to watch. They always bring the energy. They always bring the hype. And uh, you guys are not going to want to blink this one. This is not the time to take a bathroom break. Make sure you guys <laughs> don't go anywhere. This is going to be one of the most exciting matches of the morning. Yeah, this is going to be a banger for sure. I love his wind-up in the beginning. Yes. It gets me so pumped. Hokagi, that's his, uh, he's got his, it's the, uh, it's like the anime style. Yeah. <laughs> he is like a character, too. I never know what he's going to do next. A living anime character. A living anime character, that's right. coming up for the two. I think you'll notice a lot of competitors conceding the, the sweep um, if they feel like you will come up into a position where they can easily sweep them. Mm. Like Fabricio swept back pretty easily. He's in his single leg X, he's got a foot on the bicep. He's pretty confident that he's gonna be able to rock it back and forth. Mm. Fabricio having a deep knee up the middle. If he can push that left leg between his legs, maybe he can start working some kind of knee cut. Both competitors kind of feeling each other out right now. Yeah, interesting here we see Fabrizio Andre not in a big rush to pass because sometimes we'll see, you know, an insistent on his left hand pushing that same side leg down mm -hmm. in order, which we did see him switch to the grip now in order to step over and continue to establish more of a knee cut position, but not looking in a rush to do that. I think it definitely has something to do too with the grip that Diego had with, uh, Diego had with his left leg mm -hmm. around the back of the knee. Oh, wow. Nice, wow. Nice overhead sweep. <laughs> <laughs> that was almost very dangerous for Fabricio Andre. Could have been the back, could have been the mount. Yeah. Big extension. Could have been an arm bar. That was yeah. a nice recovery on his part. His balance maybe got a little bit too forward. And uh, Diego capitalized. You can see Fab uh, Fabricio's fingers taped up. Um, he hurt it in one of his matches yesterday. Not yeah. sure how that's feeling or if that's going to affect his. That's right. His they stopped today. the match. Yeah, they, yeah, he got twisted up in his quarterfinal match in the gi. Mm. I think it was his quarterfinals. He got twisted up. He had a double pant grip, and there was like a spinning thing. And mm -hmm. yeah, he had to tape his finger up mid match. He was wincing quite a lot too. It looked like he was in a lot of pain. It so looked really painful. Yeah. Definitely not enough, though, to stop his pursuit into the World Finals. The other semis opposite this bracket um, is going to be Isaac Dodelin, Dodeline, our reigning world champion, and Sam the guy. So whoever wins this is definitely going to be looking to make a new stamp in the featherweight division as our world champion today. Fabricio trying to work a cross grip with his uh, right arm, get, trying to get a cross grip pass going. Um, but he can't quite clear that, that left side. Looks like he's trying to stomp the foot off. If he can clear that left side, he'll be able to start making progress in that direction. Yeah, again, we saw this a little bit earlier. It's one of those tough things with double lasso or spider lasso. It's difficult to clear one side because it leaves the other side exposed. So a lot of times we'll see our athletes come through and use their feet to stomp the grips away, similar to what we saw Fabrizio Andre looking to do. And now even without the grips being completely free, he's bringing some pressure forward to make some chest connection. Gets the inversion. Yeah, beautiful recovery there from Diego Sodre. But now that Fabrizio Andre's left 
right arm is free. Now he's a little more space to try to work. I see uh, Diego trying to wrap him back up and get some more control using the lapels. But Fabricio Andre being out of that double lasso is a game changer. Oh, very nice recovery from Diego. Wow, oh, wow. and on to the attack is Diego moving towards the back. Definitely establishing top position, but also still has some back exposure. Now, a memorable moment from yesterday is we had Diego Sodre and Caixinho, who's uh, Osvaldo Mozinho, last match in the elimination. It was one of the early elimination matches. It was Caixinho's last match, and he retired. But in the retiring that he did, he gave his belt to Diego Sodre. It was a big moment. He passed his belt along, and Diego Sodre continued after that to beat Joao Mendes and make it into our semifinals here. Um, this morning against the Bracer Andre. He had a big day yesterday for Diego Sodre. Just talking about the strategy in this match, uh, right now Diego is up two with one advantage. Fabricio uh, has two points, so there's a two points difference. Um, and they're in 50 50 right now. So you're probably going to see um, the match slow down from Diego's side because he, there's no reason for him to really expose himself. Uh, even if he gets swept back, he's going to be up one advantage. Um, and you're probably going to see Fabricio really start to open up to try to close the gap as the time winds down. So. Yeah, look at the insistence from Fabrizio Andre to stay really high up on the hamstring. You can see he's extending his hips really high to continue to lock that 50-50 up near the hip. And I believe it's for that reason exactly that he just showed. Because when he is able to get high up on that hip like that and then bring his legs back down, he had so much momentum on his side through gravity to knock down the hip rather than trying to knock down 50-50 from the knee line. So he's able to sit Sodre down and avoid his 50-50 uh, being pried open as well. Diego's trying to walk into the leg drag right now. Mm -hmm. um, you'll see whenever somebody unlocks their 50-50 and then switches the foot to like an ankle lock grip on the same side, they're going to try to work that leg drag. Now Fabricio's coming up on a single leg. And Diego kicking out. Wow. We have disconnection now. Wow, some aggressive passing here from Diego Sodre. And again, this is his match to lose. So with three minutes left, he is looking very comfortable in top position. The pressure is off of him, but at the same time, with a competitor like Fabrizio Andre, there is no time that you can ever relax in the driver's seat. That's for sure. Fabrizio loves working these ankle picks from his seated guard. working the knee cut. It looks like Diego's trying to get a foot on anything he can to create some space. Oh no, and he's got the triangle. Wow. So there's a two point answer, but in straight into a submission, still down by an advantage. Oh, Will damn. Fabricio be able to score? Oh, it looks wow. like he's moving into a pass after a big headstand there <laughs> from Diego Sodre. I've never quite seen that defense. But this position could be enough to put some serious points on the board for Mauricio Andre to change this match around. Yeah, this is about to pop off. Diego's got full post on his body, so he's still got some distance to cover. Oh. So we're tied up now. Wow, that near pass advantage there tied up the score for Fabrizio Andre. And we have gone from a comfortable 2.1 advantage lead to a tied match with two relentless athletes.
one minute left. The next moments are really going to decide this match. You've got to imagine what's going on in the minds of these two athletes with 55 seconds left. They both have just received one penalty, so the score is still even. But this match decides who is going to punch their way into the world finals of the featherweight division. I think when it's tied up like this, it's, it's interesting because you feel like, would I win the decision? Did I do enough? Do I need to risk right now and try to go and close this thing out? Yeah, absolutely. And it's quite a risky game to play, right? Because you're imagining that maybe you see it the same way that the ref does, and that is a hard thing to know. Mm -hmm. See some shot attempts here from Fabrice Andre. We've seen some big takedowns from him over and over, so not surprising, but it be a smart move there by Diego Sodre opting to pull instead. Now you're right, Dom. I think what you said earlier, the question in their minds is, did I do enough? Mm -hmm. You know, did I take enough risks? Did I create enough action? Was I dominant enough in this match to warrant being pushed through into the finals? what our referees decide here. Now we have a split decision win for Diego Sodre. Wow. Split decision win on a very, very tough match. That was really close. That, that pushes, really wow. What a difficult match to call that must have been for our referees. But it will be Diego Sodre moving on into the finals to face either Sam Nagai or Isaac Doderlein. And as I say that, Sam Nagai has a fully locked arm bar in Isaac Doderlein. There isn't a tap yet, but I just wanted to alert you guys Ooh. to what a crazy situation we also have over on that one.